Hi, I'm Sophia, and welcome back to another incredibly niche how-to video. Today we're going to be learning how to punch rugs. I've seen these rugs like all over Pinterest and TikTok, so of course I wanted to make my own, but when I went to look at the tutorials, they were either too complicated for my teeny tiny pigeon brain to follow, or they used big expensive equipment that I unfortunately do not have because I spent all of my money on the MCAT this summer. So. Here we go, the easiest, cheapest, and most idiot-proof punch needle rug tutorial that is on the internet. Before I get started, I would like to say that I honestly have no idea if I'm doing this correctly, um, but I have made two rugs so far. My first one was this pink and yellow flower one. Um, it's very cute and pretty. And my second one was this like Matisse-inspired weird one. However, I'm by no means a professional, so if you see me doing something wrong or stupid or dumb, uh, please don't roast me because I'm shy. Okay, so starting with supplies. The first thing I have is this big wooden frame. This is what we're going to use to attach our cloth to so we can punch the rug into it. So to make this frame, I just went to Lowe's and I bought one of those 2 inch by 2 inch by 8 feet long wooden rods and I had this nice young man at Lowe's uh, cut it into 4 equal pieces for me because that is what the patriarchy is for. So in the end, I had 4 pieces that were each 2 feet long. And then I asked the Lowe's guy how I should attach the wooden pieces to each other and he said to try screwing. So I ended up buying a four pack of three inch long screws. And then when I came home, I used my dad's like power drill thingy. And then I just screwed the screws into the wooden pieces um, until it looked like this. Woo! Obviously, if you don't mind spending money and you want to save time and energy, you could also just buy a pre-made frame. I'm sure they sell those at like craft stores. Or I've also seen people just take painting canvases and then cut out the inside canvas part and just use the frame, uh, which is probably simpler and cheap, and I probably should have done that, but I want it to be unique. Anyways, the rest of the supplies are much easier to acquire. We have this fabric called Monk's Cloth. It's apparently what you're supposed to use if you want to make a punch needle rug. I just went on Amazon and found the biggest piece that I could find. This is a scrap left over from my other rug, so yeah, I'll link the size and stuff below. The monk's cloth also came with a fabric marker, which is what I use to draw out my designs before I start yarning, punching, punching it. Speaking of yarn, I also got the yarn from Amazon. This yarn is by the brand Lions Brand, and it's really thick. It's like size 6 thickness or something like that, um, which is really important because if your thread is too thin, it's not going to work and it's going to take forever for you to like fill up an entire rug. The specific colors that I have are left over from my other projects, but Amazon has like 30 colors, so pick and choose your favorites. The punch needle, again, is from Mr. Jeff Bezos himself. It is just a regular punch needle. I don't know, I just searched up punch needle on Amazon and bought a two pack. The first one actually broke, so this is my second one but this one's working great. And it comes with this metal threader, which is important in threading your yarn, so don't lose it. And finally, we have scissors and a stapler, and we also need glue, but I forgot to get that out, so just get that for later. Hi, welcome to the second part of the tutorial. This is going to be the actual process of making the rug, woo! So what I've done is I've just taken my monk's cloth and laid it flat on the floor and then put my frame over it just to make sure I had enough cloth. And the way that I'm going to attach the frame and the monk's cloth is with staples. Okay, so I finished the first edge. You don't need that many staples, just as long as it's secure. And anyways, I'm just going to finish the rest of the edges now. Okay, so I finished my frame. The most important thing for the frame is just that the fabric is like taut. So for choosing my designs in like inspo and stuff, I just use Pinterest because I have no originality. But this time I already know what I want to do. I'm gonna do this surprised Pikachu face because I'm trying to use up all my leftover yarn and I happen to have a lot of yellow. So I'm thinking that's gonna be like the Pikachu color. And then I have this pinkish purple, which I'm gonna use for the cheeks and the mouth. And then I have this dark purple that I'm gonna use for the darker shadowy things. Hopefully it doesn't look stupid. I just don't wanna have any extra yarn left over this time. Anyways, I'm just gonna take my fabric marker and draw it on really quickly. 
So here's my rough sketch of the outline and now we finally get to start punching. So to start, you're gonna take your needle, your threader, and your first color yarn that you're gonna use. And the first color that you use should be the one that's gonna be the base or like the background color because the later in the process that you use a color, the more it'll like stand out. And so you wanna save those for like the details. I'm gonna get really close to the camera to show you guys this, but basically you take your threader and there should be like a metal loop. And in here, there is a hole in the needle. So you're gonna put your loop through this little hole and then down into the needle. Push it all the way down until the loop hangs out of the bottom. And then take the end of your yarn and put it through the loop like this. So now these are attached to each other. And then you're just gonna pull the threader through where you threaded it. So the yarn is gonna follow out with it. Dun -dun -dun! And then your yarn is threaded. I've changed my setup again because it's easier for me when I punch it to have it like on this angled surface. So I've just kind of tilted this frame onto my parents' bed frame, but you can use like a table or any other like surface. And then I like to hold the other end on my legs because it gives me more of a sense of control. Also, I made sure to undo a couple of loops of my yarn just so it's like loose and there's a lot of lack in my string. So to start, you're gonna take your needle, make sure you have one inch left over, and you're literally just gonna punch it in wherever you wanna start. And when you punch it in, I usually go from the angle where the sharp part of the tip is going in first, which means if you're right-handed, it's probably easier for the little one inch tail to be on your left side and for the rest of the thread to be on your right side. And so you just punch it in, and again, make sure that the tail is pointing outwards towards you, like on the left side of your needle, and then I actually take my other hand and I go to the other side of my canvas and hold on to the thread to make sure that when I take my needle out, the thread doesn't go with it. So I'm just gonna hold on to the little loop that the thread made and then pull my needle back. So now you can see there's like this one loop that I have made with my punch needle and then I just continue to do the same thing. I'll usually space my punches about half a centimeter to a centimeter apart and I tend to go in circles or like outline it until I get to the very center. Next to the place where I did my first punch, I'm going to move my needle half a centimeter and then punch in again. I'm gonna take my other hand and hold the loop on the other side to make sure that it doesn't get like pulled back and then I just repeat. So when you get to a place where you want to stop or you finish like filling in an area, so I've just finished filling in Pikachu's right ear, then what you're going to do is you're going to take your handy dandy scissors, make sure your needle is on this side, your thread is on this side, and just cut it so there's like maybe like a centimeter left over on here and a centimeter left over like on there. Then you pull this out to an inch and then pick a new place and start filling in there. The sun is setting so fast, but I finally finished all my yellow yarn. There's the little Pikachu and I'm gonna start threading my pink yarn for the cheeks and the mouth. It has been so many hours since I started. The sun has literally set and I've been very tired, but I have finally finished filling in the whole Pikachu. I think it turned out really good. I didn't have white yarn, so I literally just found some random white thread um, in my mom's sewing drawer and kind of made it work. Anyways, I'm really tired now, so tomorrow when I get up, I'll show you guys how to take Pikachu out of the frame and finish the whole thing. Hello, welcome back. It is a new day and now we are going to finish our rug. So once you've finished doing all the stuff that you wanna do on your rug, you're gonna to need to take the fabric out of the frame. So I'm just gonna go with a screwdriver and like pry open all the staples from the sides of my frame. So now that I have successfully detached the rug from the frame, I'm going to take a pair of 
scissors and just cut around the shape of my rug, leaving about a one inch margin all around. So once I finish cutting around the edge, I'm gonna go and cut some slits about a few inches apart. So just like this. I do not know what happened, but I'm missing some of the audio for this. So I'm just gonna voice over this part. I'm taking some Gorilla Glue. You can also use hot glue or white glue is probably fine too. And I'm just taking a wooden popsicle stick and using that to scoop out the glue and smearing it on the edges of my rug and then folding the margins that I had cut inward. And to really let the glue stick, after I finish each section, I'm stacking on top of it a bunch of old textbooks just to give it some weight and so that the fabric really sticks to the carpet. Once I'm done folding in all of the margins around the rug, I'm gonna give it like 10 or 15 minutes just to dry. Once that time has passed, I'm just gonna put my rug on top of this blank white t-shirt that I have that I don't use anymore. And I'm gonna cut out a shape of Pikachu on the back of the t-shirt, slightly smaller than what the rug actually is. So I'll be able to stick it on top and cover up those ugly margins that I have. And once I've cut out the backing out of the t-shirt, I'm just using the same technique of using the wooden popsicle stick to glue the backing onto the entire rug. Hi, it's been a couple hours of Pikachu sitting under all of those books and I finally removed the books and voila, he's complete and he's so cute. I love him so much. I really like how this one turned out. He's pretty small and I don't know if he can actually fit both of my feet to use as a rug, but if that's the case, I think I'll just like use him as wall art or something, just command strip him onto my wall. I'm gonna do a quick little montage of all three of my rugs together so you guys can see them. Anyways, that's it for the video. Thank you guys so much for watching and following along. Please let me know in the comments if you guys tried this and it worked and send me your designs on Instagram. That would be really cool. Like, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram at underscore SofiaZoo underscore. And I will see you guys next time. Bye!